KFHS Sports. With the KFHS Sports, I'm Kyle Haas. Well, for the past six weeks, the Fort Hayes State football team has put up gaudy numbers on offense, have held teams to less than 70 yards per game on defense, and, well, uh, yeah, well, the special teams have been the weak link. However, Saturday, the Tigers squared off against a team in Missouri Southern who had an identical record to theirs in a battle between the two cellar dwellers of the MIAA. Well, it was senior day at Lewis Field Stadium. Fifth-year offensive lineman Colby McKinney honored before the game, one of 19 players playing their final contest at home. The emotional pregame would carry over to the opening kickoff as Tim Parker would take the ball and return this kick 64 yards down to the Missouri Southern 33-yard line. Parker, would, however, would injure his knee on this play, did not return as the Tigers would stall out four plays later. In the second, the Tigers down seven. Mike Garrison would connect with O.J. Murdoch on a 27-yard pass and catch, which would lead to a Fort Hayes State field goal. Four plays later, the Tigers pull within four. Later in the second, Tigers still trailing. James Walker does it on his own, takes off. And he goes 48 yards. He would later punch it in from two yards out for one of two uh, for his first of two touchdowns on the day. The Tigers up 10 to seven. Coming out of half, Missouri Southern gets a little tricky with his reverse throwback to Narante three for a 17-yard touchdown. Lions retake the lead 17 to 10. Early in the fourth quarter, the Tigers driving down 14 when Mike Garrison finds tight end Bo Gadwood who rumbles down the field 49 yards. FHSU would la later score in the drive, slice the lead in half. The ensuing drive, Lions quarterback Colin Howard connects to Narante three to Ginn, who goes 71 yards and takes it inside the Fort Hayes 10, where they were uh, kick a field goal to push their lead back up to 10. Well, coming up is a scary moment as the Tigers drive in. Garrison's pass is picked off, but look at how O.J. Murdoch falls. He lands on his upper back, lower neck region. He would be down for several minutes, had to call in the ambulance and get the back brace and stretcher as the most silent time I've ever heard at Lewis Field Stadium. Not even a whisker, whisper could be uh, heard at the stadium as everybody on both sides takes a moment to recognize until he's back in. Fort Hayes State would not give up, however, as Mike Garrison would connect to Cordero Scales and Chris Williams. However, the Tigers just not enough as the Fort Hayes falls for their seventh Game in a row, losing 41-31 to Missouri Southern. Garrison throws for over 400 yards for the second time this year, but gives up three turnovers on three interceptions. He bested his former 400-yard uh, game by 13 yards. Jacob Crossman also added in with three sacks to tie him for fourth all-time in Fort Hayes State history, tied uh, in, in, in a season. Crossman shared his thoughts on the team's performance after the game. You know, coming into the season, you know, everyone had high hopes and everyone was on a high horse, basically, and we just haven't been able to come out here and produce. On a more immediate note, the injury that receiver O.J. Murdoch received has been cleared by the medical staff. However, Kevin Verdugo doubts a return. Uh, I'd say 90% probably not going to go, but, uh, you know, he's uh, he's been a guy that's been dinged up in the past and uh, has found a way to get on the field, so we'll make that determination as the week goes along. Soft tissue damage uh, would be the best way to put it, uh, more of sprain. Uh, there were no fractures, no breaks or anything of that sort. So, well, More news out of the Fort Hayes State football program as KFHS first to rep report that head coach Kevin Verdugo has been fired. Two different uh, credible sources have uh, close to the team have indicated that coach Kevin Verdugo had a closed door meeting yesterday with his team and officials and that he will be released of his coaching duties following Saturday's upcoming game against Missouri Western. Verdugo has been the head coach for the Tigers for the past six seasons, posting an 18 and 46 record during his tenure. Last season, he led the Tigers to their second winning season in the past 15 years. The amount, the announcement is to be made official tomorrow afternoon. Well, as fall gives way to winter, so does the pigskin to the basketball. And last Friday night was the first time the Tiger faithful were going to be able to see their number 28th ranked men's basketball team play for the next two weeks as they headed into their lone exhibition contest against Central Christian College. Preseason All-American Dominic Jones getting his team pumped up before the home crowd of nearly 2,000. Things start off a little slow, however, for Fort Hayes State as Dan Givens of Central Christian I'll take this pass and drive into the teeth of the Tiger defense to lay this up. Missouri or Central Christian would be up by as many as five early on. 
Fort Hayes would answer back, however, as Ken Bowman would get the ball <clears throat> and shows a little finesse move here coming up. Something he picked up in the offseason, it looks like. Fadeaway hook is good. Tiger still trail. FHS would eventually buckle down on the defensive end as on the block by Matt Simmons would lead to a fast break situation. Moses Day to Corbin Coons for the easy lay-in. Then in the second half, the Tigers cruising. Dominic Jones decides to hoist one up from long range, comes up short, but Ken Bowman there for the slam as he gets 10 of his 12 points in the, in the evening. And for Mark Johnson and the Tigers, just another day at the office as he casually walks away. Fort Hayes State wins 88-46. to Fort Hayes State perfect in their exhibition contest this season as uh, Dazon Smith goes for 14 points, 8 rebounds. Ken Bowman 15 points and 6 rebounds, however. And Dominique Jones, 10 points and 6 assists. Newcomer Karan McKenzie, the only double-double, 10 points and 12 rebounds. Well, following a subpar performance at the Tiger Open three weeks ago, the men's and women's cross-country coach Jason McCullough said he believed his team was in fine position to challenge for the conference championship. This past Saturday, the Tiger cross-country team looked to, make, uh, looked to the Fort Hayes State course to see if they could make good on their coach's prophecy. On the women's side, the ladies battled all morning to crap into the, crack into the top five with Heidi Hines having her best finish, placing 16th. Amy Algram and Haley Moby rounded out the all-conference election, going 19th and 20th. Well, for the men, it was a little bit rougher as they finished in sixth place and 11 points behind Pittsburgh State for fifth and an astounding 96 points behind eventual champion Central Missouri. Cameron Reith and Tanner Christensen, the lone all-conference finishers, finishing 12th and 15th, respectively. Well, after finishing 13th in the national rankings a season ago and beginning this year's campaign in the top 20 again, the Tiger men's wrestling team uh, started off this season with high aspirations and even higher expectations, despite not having a single race wrestler ranked in the top five in any weight class. This past weekend, the Tigers officially began their season with the Dan Harris Open at Baker University in Baldwin City, Kansas. The Fort Hayes State wrestlers land four champions with three wrestling affiliated Alden Eisenberg at 133, Mitch Means at 149, Travis Budke at 165, and Tyler Gonzalez at 189, who wrestled unattached. He will join the team in the uh, second half of the season. The Tiger wrestlers will hit the road to Laramie, Wyoming for the Cowboy Open this weekend. Well, cheer up, sleepy Gene. Oh, what can it mean to a daydream believer and a homecoming queen? Little monkey's reference for everybody. Well, it may not be running for the homecoming queen, but it's the Fort Hayes State volleyball team that seems that they're in a dream, or rather a nightmare. This season, still looking for their first conference win on the season, the ladies have to do it on the road, as Friday and Saturday they travel to south southwestern Missouri to try to finish strong. The ladies on Friday night fall in straight sets to Missouri Southern 25-21, 25-17, and 25-17. Madison Schwartz comes up big with seven kills, as well as Michaela McPhail with seven kills. Chamberlain adds in 11 digs, and Whitney Liggett, the lone senior, puts in 23. On Saturday, same result. The Tigers lose in three consecutive sets. Schwartz goes in with seven kills. The Tigers showed a little bit younger lineup in this match, though still the same result as they have yet to win a conference match this year. 0-17 in conference play, so rough weekend for the ladies, but a relatively successful weekend for Tiger Athletics as a whole. Yeah, it was. That was really painful to watch O.J. Murdoch's fall. That's really too bad You know, it's the a, end of the it, season. It's a really good thing that he's good, he's okay, and because mm -hmm. uh, there's aspirations <laughs> that he might be able to play at the next level, so uh, hope that he gets a speedy recovery. Absolutely. I'm glad to see that he is all right. Yeah. Okay, everyone, thank you for tuning in to the news tonight. Stay tuned for Around Town at 530. Have a good night.